Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. The devil, the devil is not something, the devil is someone. Some people, even in the church, would like to explain away the mystery of the devil, saying, he's just a phenomenon, he's just a projection from your mind is just an effect of perhaps scrupulosity or a sort of a vibration somewhere. They are wrong. The devil is a person. He is not a thing. The devil is a spirit. So he doesn't have a body, even though he may be represented on some pictures with a body, even though he may take the shape of a body to frighten God's children, he is a spirit. He is a spirit, but a created spirit. Only God is the un created spirit. So the devil was created by God. That tells us already that the devil is not equal to God in might and origin. The devil is a spirit, a created spirit, and a fallen spirit. That means that he was created good. Remember that God, the author of everything, is good. Could God ever create a being that would be evil in itself by nature and from the start? No. The devil was created a good angel and misused his God-given freedom. He fell in love with his natural excellence and how excellent he was indeed. His name tells us. Lucifer means in Latin, the bearer of light. Now this is a glorious name really. That tells us something about the natural excellence of that angel as a created spirit. So what happened? Lucifer refused the grace of God. He was to be elevated gratuitously to supernatural glory. He was to become greater than he was, much greater, as a further gift from God. And he said no. He refused to owe God such an elevation. As a consequence, he was precipitated into the material world. And since then, he wants to hurt God. But because he's not stupid, he knows that this is beyond his power, much as he would try. And so he will hurt God by proxy, so to speak. He will attack God in these creatures of God, which are closer to God. The better a creature reflects God's perfection, the more Satan wants to destroy that divine resemblance. So let us think one second. Which creatures are closer to God in perfection? 
If you have pets at home, little cat, you may like the cat very much, but it is quite remote from God on the scale of beings. If, uh, with the spring closer to us, think of your rose bushes, it's very good and gives a lot of joy. But it is still quite remote from God in perfection. No, that category of creatures closest to God is the angels. And so Lucifer tried to seduce his fellow angels. And unfortunately, he succeeded to some extent. There was a great battle in heaven, Lucifer fighting against God and his angels, and thankfully, St. Michael, the archangel, fought on behalf of God with all the good angels. The name St. Michael also tells us a lot about the motivations and loyalty of that particular angel. Michael translates Quizu Deus, who is alike to God. So the very name of that angel, the champion of the rights of God, is a challenge to the arrogance of Lucifer. The name Michael could be translated in a colloquial way as who do you think you are, you Lucifer? No one is a lie to God. And thankfully, St. Michael won the battle. Since then, of course, many angels, having followed Lucifer, became with him demons and populate the material world. What next category of creatures is on the hit list of the devil to offend God by proxy? After the angels, it's not the animals, it's not the vegetals, it's not the minerals. I'm sure you've guessed that it is us, it is the human beings, because in us, rational creatures, there is a resemblance of God our maker, which makes us, under that respect, alike to the angels. We are spirits like they are, even though we are embodied ones. And this is why, dear friends, it is so important that we should learn about the devil and be aware of his activity. We must keep away from the devil. We must not even start a conversation with him. That proved fatal to our mother Eve in the Garden of Eden. She answered him. She engaged into conversation with the devil. How imprudent, even though he is fallen, he retains his angelic nature and therefore he is much more intelligent than we are, than the most intelligent human being. His intellect is intuitive, he can see immediately the consequences, he circumvenes us. So no dialogue, no conversation of any kind with the devil. The devil is like a mad dog on a chain. He is harmless as long as we don't come within his reach. Yes, the devil will sometimes tempt us by divine permission. It is not that God wants it. God doesn't order that. God allows it for a greater good. And what is the greater good? It is to allow us to grow in virtue, coming closer to God and manifesting the power of divine grace, even through our weaknesses. And this is what we see in the gospel of today. Our Lord is God, but also man. As man, he is tempted three times 
in the desert. Now, there's something very important here for us to remember. To be tempted in itself is not a sin. Otherwise, Jesus would have sinned three times in the desert being tempted? No. No, no, no. The sin is when we are tempted to give in. But that's only a second stage. Stage one is, oh, I am tempted. So far, there is no sin. What is expected of us is simply to imitate our blessed Lord. Remember, we do not start a conversation with the devil. Our Lord simply quotes the word of God. He refers to God. He takes God as his shield, as his protection. And that is certainly what we should do whenever we are tempted. Remember that the devil cannot read inside your soul. And he cannot either compel our will. This is, of course, unless we invite him in, which we should never do. And that is also why, in passing, we should never, ever dabble into the occult, put one finger into these dark schemes, even for fun, even out of curiosity. No, 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 not a finger. We are not involved in that, because if we do, we open the door, however slightly, to his influence. And then, what will happen? Friends, I conclude with reminding us that we are given all the protection we need. We have our Blessed Lady. She was prophesied from the very beginning as the one who shall crush the head of the serpent. And crush it she did when she gave birth to Jesus and stood by his cross as a new Eve, giving us with him life everlasting. We have St. Joseph invoked in the litany as the terror of the demons. We have the seven sacraments, efficacious means of divine grace to be communicated to us. We have prayer, the Holy Rosary, the litany. We have acts of penance and of charity. We have our guardian angel. Again, the gospel of today ends with angels coming to our Lord in the desert. This time, not bad angels, but good angels to serve him. We can be sure that when we are troubled, if we ask our angels, they will also come to us, protect us, and guide us. Friends, as we begin this Lent 2023, let us remember that the devil is already vanquished, vanquished by the passion of Christ, vanquished by the cross and death of Christ, vanquished by the resurrection of Christ on Easter Sunday. Therefore, with confidence and humility, let us surrender to our Lord and Our Lady, and we will be safe and we will be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.